Hey friend, Chris Vandeviver here from widelogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I wanna walk you through an amazing performance controller from Novation, and that is the Launchpad X. It's one of three different Launchpad controllers offered by the company. Now, I admit, I've been on a bit of a gear streak lately here on the channel and website, but when it comes to controllers that tightly integrate with Logic, that is just a topic near and dear to my heart. Because when it comes to tactile controllers that tightly integrate with Logic right out of the box, I have to admit the options are kind of few and far between. But Novation, in my opinion, is a company that is stepping up to the plate for Logic users. I was so impressed with their launch keys that I replaced all of my complete controllers with the launch key series. And if you go to Apple's own website for Logic Pro, you can see the launch pad prominently displayed on the site, which indicates to me that there's an intent for tight integration with these controllers, which I think is a great sign. So I just wanna walk you through the functionality of the launch pad, what performance value it brings to your workflow in Logic Pro, so let's begin. Setup with the launch pad is as easy as could be. You basically just plug it into your Mac and away you go. If you're using Logic Pro 10.6 or above, that's the extent of the setup. But if you're using Logic Pro between 10.5 and 10.6, then there's one extra step where you physically rotate the controller 90 degrees so that the colors on the grid itself match that of the grid in the live loop section of Logic Pro. And you can even rotate the orientation of the grid itself by going to Logic Pro, Control Surfaces, and Setup. This is 10.6 or above. And right under the Devices tab, we have Device Rotation, which you can set to either 90 degrees to the left or to the right. But I'm just going to leave it at none. Now, looking down at the controller, it's obvious. This thing is ready to go with live loops. Colors on the controller itself match that of the live loops. And just by pressing one of the colored blocks on the controller, you immediately begin playback of that cell. And if you want to load an entire scene, just click any of the green blocks at the bottom of the launch pad. You can also stop playback of cells by clicking on the individual cell blocks on the launch pad. The only criticism I have for the Launchpad X is that there's no button to start and stop playback. Instead, you have to go through and tap each of the playing cells, which is kind of a workflow killer in my opinion. So instead, what I like to do is, is I go up to Logic Pro, go down to Control Surfaces, and under Learn Assignment for Player Stop, I use spacebar on my Mac keyboard, and that was the last function that was used, so that's why it's the one in focus. I'm going to click on this, learn assignment for player stop, and we can see the learn mode is enabled within the controller assignment, so all I have to do is press a button on the launch pad to assign start and stop playback to that button. I'm going to use the capture MIDI button, because as far as I can tell, capture MIDI doesn't seem to do anything with logic. I've read through the manual, I've watched some videos. Maybe I'm wrong, but it seems like a good place for that assignment to be. So now if I press capture MIDI, it immediately starts and stops playback, which is fantastic. So then you don't really have to go navigating to your Mac keyboard or to the mouse. Navigating the grid on the launch pad is pretty awesome as well. We have these four arrows in the upper left-hand corner where we can go down along the grid. We can go up to the right or to the left. In my opinion, it kind of feels like you're playing a video game, and that to me is sort of fun, navigating around the grid like this. After that, we have three different mode buttons, which shows us different views or modes of the launch pad. As you can see, the session button is in green, which lets us know that we're in a live loops focused mode. If we click on the session button, it turns from green to orange, and now the mixer functionality options are illuminated. We also have a note mode, which is Kind of crazy looking, but it's basically the keys of a keyboard spread out across the grid. A little crazy to look at, but we can adjust the view and the scale of these keys and how they're spread out across the grid, which we'll examine later. And also we have a custom mode, which gives us four customized options for viewing our controller. Custom mode one, which is the volume button on the right hand side, is a drum view. And the drums are laid out from left to right, starting from the bottom left hand corner about midway through. So from the first yellow block, to the last yellow block in that row, and then we move up a row and work our way across like this. And it goes all the way up until we get to the last block here in the pink, and then we go back down to the blue, right up through the green. Custom mode number two is a different way of looking at the piano keys for playing melodic instruments. 
Customos three and four are unassigned, but you can assign them yourself using the companion components app from Novation. Heading back to the mixer view, let's take a look at some of the options on the right-hand side. We have volume, and let's actually open the mixer in Logic as well. What I find interesting about the mixer functionality on the launch pad is that it basically turns the Logic mixer into a performance-based activity as well. Now the channel strips go from left to right in Logic. In this case, it's gonna go from top to bottom. And check it out, if we lightly press one of these squares on the grid, the fader value of that corresponding channel strip slowly adjusts to the value that we set. But if you do a hard press, it quickly adjusts. And you could also make incremental adjustments just by clicking lightly on some of these blocks. So let's go back to session view. We'll load up a scene and we'll adjust some volume of the tracks. After that, we have pan, which allows us to pan the individual channel strips. You'll see that two blocks are in the center, which indicates to us that those channel strips are panned to the center. But again, if we lightly touch, the panning slowly adjusts to the left-hand side, or a hard tap adjusts in a fast adjustment to the right. And if we click in the center two blocks here, the channel strip is set back to the center. So again, let's take a listen and play around with panning. Then we have sends A and B, which allow us to adjust the level of the send assignments for the first two slots of each channel strip. So let's give that a try. After that, we have stop clip. If you're working with a grid that's getting pretty sizable, where you have lots of cells, lots of scenes, and you're having to navigate quite a bit, you know, having to page through a lot of different cells, Maybe you're listening back and you want to stop a cell from playing back. But as we mentioned, if you got to go navigating all over the place, you might not be able to find the cell in time or even be able to identify the cell that you want to turn off. In that case, instead of paging through the entire grid, we have these green blocks on the right-hand side, which allows us to stop the playback of any cell on that row. So if we begin playback and use these green blocks... which makes it a bit easier than having to navigate a huge grid using the arrows. And of course, after that, we have mute and solo, which allows us to mute or solo. So let's try that out. And lastly, we have record arm, which allows us to record directly to a cell just by clicking on that empty cell. And you can see that the record arm is enabled or disabled via this last row here. So let's quickly record a basic drum beat to the first scene here. And there we have it. We've recorded to this scene right here in the cell for the 808 Flex. Next up, we're going to load up an instance of the electric piano, and we're going to dig into the note view of the launch pad. Again, for those of us who are more accustomed to a piano and how that's laid out, this grid view of the piano keys can feel a little weird. But you can customize this in a variety of ways. First, the pink squares let us know the root note of the chosen scale. So in this case, we're working with C natural minor. The blue squares let us know that those notes are part of the scale. So we can quickly play some of these notes. The dim squares are not part of the scale, but are still active to play. So honestly, we could play C several octaves above just by stretching out our hand, which is kind of cool. But let's dig deeper into the note mode. By holding the note pad, we can adjust the root note, the scale, and the view of this keyboard mode. First of all, we have kind of a keyboard view or piano roll view here with C, D, E. And as you can see, I'm adjusting the root note of the scale that we're working in. So we can work with D natural minor or E natural minor. 
And right below, we have 16 blue pads, which indicate to us different scales of our chosen root note. So we can set, instead of C natural minor, we could have C major or D major, or we could do D Dorian. And there are 16 different scales to choose from using the launch pad. Below that, we have 16 yellow pads, which indicate which MIDI channel we're working with. So one through 16, I'm gonna stick with one and we'll stick with C major. And the best part, in my opinion, is these five different views or performance layouts that you can use using the note mode. The first mode is just sequential. So if we go back to the grid here, every single note on this grid is unique to itself. It doesn't overlap with any other notes. So if we press, you know, one of these keys, you don't see any other key light up. But if we go back, we can set this to a two finger mode. So if you take a look, we can see that another key is lit up. So we can basically walk up the scale with only two fingers. Or we can set this to a three finger mode. And beyond that, a four finger mode and a five finger mode. Now, again, the orientation looks kind of weird because we have these empty blocks and that could maybe throw you. So what Novation has done as well is include the option to switch from chromatic to scale mode. So chromatic obviously includes keys that aren't part of our scale. Whereas scale mode removes all of the keys that are not part of the scale. So if we switch back to a sequential mode here, we can walk up the scale just going from left to right. And you can see that the root note is the same both sides from the bottom right-hand corner to the next row left-hand corner. If we go back into the note modes, and choose something maybe like a three finger scale, we can walk up the scale using only three fingers very easily. Between scale mode and these different orientations of the piano keys, you can make some pretty interesting sounding shapes and chords, you know, without having to have your hands spread out across a 49 key or 61 key keyboard. Instead, you can just press several keys together. And you're always within that scale of that root note. Now, it's easy to assume that this type of controller is only going to be helpful to loop-based music or only helpful to electronic or hip-hop producers. But, but what I like about the launch pad is that it kind of encourages spontaneity because of these different modes that are not immediately evident based on the key layout. And it definitely makes Logic's live loop section a lot more tactile and accessible. So that's the Launchpad X from Novation in a nutshell. If you're looking for controllers that tightly integrate with Logic and that inspire spontaneity and creativity, I think this is something worth checking out. And I'll actually release a video in the near future using only the Launchpad X for creating and making music in Logic Pro. So I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Thanks so much.